All right, you're gonna wanna see this. Google's AI Studio just pushed a massive update, and honestly, it feels like it could change the entire game for how we make software. We are looking at the very beginning of something they're calling vibe coding. So it kind of begs the question, did Google just, you know, quietly launch an app store for AI? Because that's what it feels like. There's this new gallery feature inside AI Studio, and it's not just for showing off AI apps. Nope. It lets anyone clone them, remix them, and build on top of what other people have already made. Let's take a look at what's in there. First off, there are some just plain fun demos, like this one, a personal time machine. You just upload a photo of yourself, and boom, Gemini spits out versions of you from different decades, but it keeps you looking like you. It's a super cool way to see what this thing can do, all with a simple drag and drop. And the artistic side of this is wow. There's another demo called Paint a Place, and it does exactly what it says. You can take any spot on Google Maps and it will turn it into a beautiful watercolor painting. It's a great reminder that these tools aren't just for, you know, productivity. They can be used to create real art. And it's not just about static pictures either. People are already in there building actual interactive stuff. I mean, check this out. A simple 8-bit video game built and shared right in the gallery. And here's the best part. If you see something you like, say that game over animation, you can just grab the code for that specific part and pull it right into your own project. These demos are really just the beginning, though. They're all powered by this totally new way of building that Google is pioneering. They're calling it the vibe coding revolution. So what on earth is vibe coding? Well, the idea is almost shockingly simple. You just describe what you want to build in plain English, and Google's Gemini AI starts building a working app right there in front of you. There's no complicated setup, no fighting with APIs. You just have an idea, and poof, it becomes a real thing. And the whole process is incredibly simple. You start with a prompt, and Gemini builds the basic app. You know, the logic and the plumbing. But here's where the real magic happens. Step three editing visually with a feature called annotation mode. This quote just nails it. Instead of having to dig through lines and lines of code to make a small change, you literally just highlight something on the screen and tell the AI what you want. Make this button blue, animate this thing from the side. You're not filing bug reports against your own project. You're sculpting it live. Let's just put these two methods side by side for a second. The old way, ugh, it's that endless tedious loop, right? Find the code, change the code, test it, see if it broke anything, and do it all over again. The vibe way just completely collapses that cycle. You just point at something, say what you want, and see the change happen. Instantly. It's like you're having a conversation with your app. Okay, so this isn't just a random collection of cool features. There's a real driving philosophy behind it all. A clear vision for what building stuff should actually feel like. And that philosophy is simple less ceremony, more output. The whole idea is to get rid of all the friction, right? All the boring, repetitive tasks that just get in the way of turning your idea into something real. I mean, the goal here is pretty clear. First, they want to lower the barrier so that anyone with a good idea can build something, even if they're not a traditional coder. It also kind of squishes the roles of designer, developer, and tester into one smooth process. And for the experienced devs out there, it just cuts out all the boring parts, so you can focus on the hard problems. I love this analogy because it perfectly describes the new relationship between you and the computer. It's not about doing these complex engineering gymnastics anymore. It's more like you're the director and you have this incredibly capable AI teammate who just gets what you're trying to do and makes it happen. Now, as incredible as vibe coding is, it's super important to understand that Google isn't operating in a bubble here. This is all part of a much bigger wave of AI-powered creativity that is sweeping across the entire tech industry. So, for instance, you've got OpenAI, who are reportedly building a next-level AI music generator. And get this, they've even been working with students from the Juilliard School to train the model not just on the notes, but on the feeling and the emotion of how real musicians play. Then you hop over to Tencent, and they've just shown off a model called World Mirror that can create a detailed 3D model from a single photo in real time. I mean, think about what that could mean for things like robotics or augmented reality. It's a game changer. And in the world of video, there's this open source model called Holocene. It can generate entire video scenes with multiple shots, keeping the characters consistent, and it even understands film language like a shot reverse shot. It's basically putting a director's toolkit into a text prompt. So we have all this amazing new power to create. It's incredible. 
But as we start to wave these tools into our lives, often through our main accounts like Google, it brings up a really critical question. How safe is the digital front door we use to get to them? And here's why that's so important right now. A huge number of Google account credentials, we're talking 183 million, were recently found being passed around on underground forums. Just that number alone should make all of us stop and think for a second. And the immediate danger is very real. Early analysis is suggesting that about 40% of those leaked passwords and usernames still work. That is an absolutely massive number of accounts just sitting there, completely vulnerable to attackers. Now, to be super clear, this wasn't a hack on Google itself. This data comes from all over the place, from tons of other third-party website leaks and phishing scams. Attackers then use automated tools, often powered by AI, to just try these logins everywhere. It's called credential stuffing. And once they get into your inbox, they can use that to pivot and take over all your other accounts that use the same password. Okay, so what can you actually do? The good news is the steps are pretty straightforward. First, change your password to something long and unique, a passphrase you don't use anywhere else. Second, turn on two-step verification, or even better, switch to a passkey. Then run Google's security checkup tool. And finally, just do a little spring cleaning. Remove any old phones or third-party apps that you don't use anymore from your account. And that brings us right back to the central question, doesn't it? We are on the edge of this incredible explosion of creativity, with tools like Veeb Coding about to empower millions of new people. But as these platforms become the center of our digital lives, how do we make sure that the future we're building is not only amazingly creative, but also fundamentally secure? That's the real challenge we all need to be thinking about. 